and the thing about working with secret tips is you gotta understand them. Um, they're not like the um, straight tips because they have a curve on the side. So you gotta make sure you build the foundation really well or it's gonna look really bulky. Um, to have that nice C curve look, you gotta really, really build the foundation really well. Um, make sure that is properly, the thickness is properly there. So, because if you build it too thick, the C curve takes on the shape and it makes it really wide. As you guys see a lot of people that use C curve tips, they look like extremely wide. It's because of that. You really gotta make sure that, see? That you, you want that C curve look, you gotta really build it. So it's gonna be tapered in the inside have that nice C curve look without having to look wide. And I'm not saying that you have to do it too thin, you just gotta do the right thickness, if that makes sense. Just just the, enough on the side while it's here. But they do have the, their own aesthetics, the C curve tips, so that's why it's very popular. A lot of people have been using that. I've used it once or twice before. Um, certain designs look better with the C-curve tips. Oh wow, why is this one so runny? Hmm. I think I had too much monomer there. Usually not that's runny with my monomer. Oh, damage control. I see, I'm, I'm just gonna make sure I clean off the cuticle area. It flooded a little bit. So what I can fix, I'll fix now. I don't worry about the thickness. I can add more powder. I'm worried about getting, whenever you have any flooding, you just gotta worry about getting the sides because your limited time that you have to fix things. So take care of the sides first, okay? Make sure everything's nice and clean. And you can add more thickness to your apex area after that. I did some pretty good damage control, so. Pretty good. I had too much monomer on there. Give this a little bit more time. And this one I'm gonna build my apex. I'll show you guys the side profile with C curves just so you guys can see in a second. Um, for how I do it specifically, I don't really like a huge apex when it comes to C curves because they're racist wide nails. I just need enough, okay? And you have to slope it from the cuticle out. You can't just have a huge bump, okay? just won't look aesthetically as pleasing as you think it'll look. For me, this is enough. Let me zoom in for you guys. You guys see that? Thank you for the stars, guys. I appreciate the donations. You guys see that? This is enough for me. And it's a little bit hard to see because it's white back, just like that. It's sexy, right? Gonna build a little bit more structure out here, but that's generally what my side profile is gonna be like. That should be it. A proper C curve thickness um, from the cuticle on out. You want to make sure that everything is nice and smooth. It looks less work for you later. She said yes. Thank you, Jasmine Freeman. So yeah, remember when it's C curved, the sides are curved a little bit. So you gotta be careful. When I lay my bead, I gotta make sure the thickness is not too crazy, right? Because the more thick we have the sides here, the wider it looks. We don't want our C curve tips to be wide. They're supposed to have this aesthetic curved tip. Looks like we did forms. This I think C, C curve is a way of like doing forms without doing forms. Because I think forms is where you the, the C curve came from. You guys see people that do forms, they pinch them, they pinch the sides. That's what it's essentially about, to be honest with you. Um, with C curve tips basically saying, oh, we, you don't have to do that. Here, replicate it. Sometimes I do forms, they put these they have these pinchers, they pinch the sides to make them curve. You 
can see my sides are not wide they're not like bulky here i don't want it bulky there i want just enough product there for me to have that c-curve look structure Got a little bit of acrylic build up in my brush from yesterday because I used a lot of clear powder. I can tell when I build up my brush. So at this point, I'm missing just a little bit of that um, apex. You guys see where it is I'm missing? The transition. So we know what to do here. Add a little bit more powder to where we need it to create the apex. If you're using C-curve tips, I, I'm sorry. Personally, if you don't know how to build an apex, don't use C-curve tips. If you don't, if you can't build, if your C-curve tips are just flat, it's just not aesthetically pleasing and they're gonna break. Not break, but if when they do, it's gonna hurt. You need to be able to have your mastery of control to be able to use these tips because it requires you to make the tips look good. <laughs> if that makes any sense. You need to be able to properly control your powder and build proper apex for, the, for these tips to look good. I've seen a lot of just straight, flat C-curve tips, and I'm just like, it looks great, but when I look at the side, I can just, I can just tell, you know? Structure is important when it comes to long nails and these these lengths. It's hard enough that it's straight, it's curved. <laughs> We're definitely gonna fit, finish this off with a little bit of filing and a little bit later, but I think I'm just, I'm good at that. Good with this. Yeah, see what I'm doing? I'm laying my bead. I'm controlling the sides. I don't want this powder to be dripping all over the sides. I'm gonna make sure it's, I'm gonna be able to control how much I have on the side. Using my brush, I'm gonna brush circular. And it gives the powder the ability to move down the nail evenly. Now when I do this, I'm not doing this when it's wet. It has to have kind of like an al dente, like hey, I'm drying, but I'm not too dry. You still can work with me in that sense. That's when I'm able to move the powder, okay? I don't want to move it too soon. If I move it when it's still wet, it's just gonna drag through the nail, you know, very thin. I need a nice consistent thickness to the nail, okay? Hey now, Dad. I'm not watching you uh, doing the in school. I miss you in your videos. Hey, Jasmine, how are you? Can't wait for my package. I ordered something from your channel. Oh, thank you. Devasia nails. And you do it with four inch pinch next. I want to learn that since I don't. Um, I Wendy Miles. I really don't work with forms that much, but there's are there are a lot of live streamers that do work with forms sometimes. You should be able to catch them on these nail pages sometimes. Um, I really don't work with forms a lot, so it's not my area of expertise. But I do know how to do it. I just need to get the stuff. So I try to work on stuff that I have expertise in. It's just easier for me. Uh, hopefully you understand that. Um, I would try to get into with more forms. Ooh, I had too much monomer there. Anytime you get flooding, the first thing I want to do is take care of the sidewalls. I don't know why I'm flooding the nail right now. My brush 
is not clean. So I, I used clear powder yesterday and a lot of it, and it's on my brush now. It's in there. I gotta, I gotta do deep clean. This brush is almost a year old. I need to make it to one year old birthday. Hey, thank you, Jennifer Ronco. You guys remember, anytime you have flooding, even me, like, you know, we were distracted, our race shows off. Take care of your cuticle area first, then the rest, okay? Don't try to, because if you tilt your client's nails down, that powder's gonna come downward. But this is where you need to worry about, the sidewalls, okay? I'm gonna have to hold this a little bit longer. This is my apex speed. I nudge my apex up because I want it to transition, okay? You don't want just a big bulge there. You want it to transition from the cuticle out here and you want it to blend also into the base of the nail. If you don't blend it, it's just gonna look like a huge ball of acrylic sitting there on top of your nail. It's not proper, okay? You need a slope effect. You know a slope? Like a slope, a small hill. Not a big slope, not a cliff. You don't want to. I have to put a black background in the background so you guys can see. See that? If you can build it, this is not this is not based off on my my apex building skills. This is based off on my ability to control powder and apply powder. Okay. Ideally, this is your what you're looking for when you want to build apex. You see how from the cuticle area coming out. It slopes outward, it bulges here where the apex is, and it consistently slopes forward. There's no bumps or jumps, okay? You can't wait for the Chicago class? I tell everyone in my class in my classes, you will learn proper application, how I do application, and you'll be able to do it there in class. And that's that's just it's gonna I I can't stress it anymore. When you are too fixated on building apex, you're gonna hinder your growth with application. Your apex should be part of your application process, okay? It's just a bonus. I'm not building an apex, I'm doing a two bead. And I'm putting more powder where I need it, okay? Because right now, the first thing when when people want to do, do is like, ah, I gotta worry about an apex. And they're forgetting about all the fundamentals of building just acrylic in general. How to work with acrylic proper apex, proper uh, application techniques timing you know liquid to powder ratio all that will make your apex just be like oh a bonus apex there's no technique for apex it's just adding more powder when you need it to build so remember that i'm not trying to discourage you guys not to learn about apex yes it's important but i just want you guys to know to see the bigger picture that you're not looking down the tunnel uh, you're not getting a, you know, one like you know, the few of vision where you, you're you're not seeing the whole picture. I need you to see the whole picture. See that natural nail? It has an apex. See that curve? That's my apex. If I build proper application over this, it'll give me my apex, right? Does that make sense, guys? Every our natural nails have a somewhat apex, right? And if we build nice application, wouldn't that accentuate the apex more? This is just two beading I'm doing, not even apex. Just proper two beading, one for the base of the nail, one for the cuticle, blending them together. You somewhat have an apex see now I say okay I need more I need more structure here in this area so what I do I do the same thing Just add my apex bead I didn't start with my apex bead I started with my two bead and I got here so my understanding of application I know that I should put some powder here I know that I should blend upward blend downward 
Et voilà. <laughs> and I'm not afraid to show you guys this via live for free. This is something you can see done. I have timing techniques that I've used. This is what a lot of my students in class, they can see this all they want, but when they're in class and they're trying to do this, it's a completely different animal, guys. A lot of my students will tell you, and in class they try to do this, if I'm not there to hold their hand or make the adjustments, they're not gonna get it. Some things you just need to be hands-on, be there. And there you go, see? Now this looks wide because it's a C curve tip. time too this process helps me with my shaping <laughs> drilling it later I'm gonna be so easy I'm gonna be doing some abstract art on this set later it'll be a pretty cute set for you guys bead and then I'll put my apex bead as my third bead okay Remember the thumb is always the biggest finger work slow important to know how much time you have to work with the powder there's a timing for everything focus on what you need to work with first whenever you're laying any bead near the cuticle area of course you're gonna want to work with the cuticle area first right so you want to make sure that it's done first because when that cuticle area dries up you can't work with that anymore make sure you blend it in make sure you get it nice and flush then down here you have plenty of time to transfer that down gravity helps us Tiny bit, okay. I'm not trying to build a bulge, I'm trying to just transition the powder evenly throughout the nail. So later on when I do file and drill, it's gonna be nice and even. Okay? And I don't want to have to drill up any excess that I wouldn't need to. And there you guys go. I could definitely can use a little more apex, but I think I'm happy with that. So I don't want it to be too thick. Later on, I'm gonna drill in this area and it's gonna make this thinner. And I'm gonna keep this the way it is and it's gonna have a nice slope effect for me. That's one hand down, guys, application wise. Um, I, I could have been a little quicker, but I was kind of walking yes through it. But eh, all in all, I'm happy with the application. The top surface is smooth, shaping is there. I just gotta do some quick reshaping and I'll be good. And for those of you guys that haven't followed the Instagram, it's pinned in the link below. I will be announcing the press-on winner probably. I know this 
end of this week. So follow the Instagram, check the post at, and enter to win your press-on set from me, custom press-ons. I use a program that just picks people out of the comments, so it could be anybody. The last person that won something was from UK. <laughs> But I'm not shipping international anymore, though. It just costs too much to ship international. So if you're from, if you want to pay for the shipping, enter. If not, then I'm sorry. Yes, you, you see something? Yes, let me show you something about. A quick education about monomer contamination. I'm sure you guys real quick, okay? Let me finish up this feed and I'll show you guys something. A really quick trick to know when your monomer is contaminated and how it can affect your bead pickup, your application, and your process of your nails. And how throwing out some old monomer would just be a lifesaver for you compared to trying to work with it, okay? This monomer is a medium setting monomer, it's my own monomer, and it's almost ready, guys. It's probably gonna be launching next week or, or late this week. I guarantee you, it is almost ready. This works with pretty much every color powder on the planet. See? Okay, so a little bit of a quick, quick nail dad tip right here. I'm about to show you. You guys see my monomer? This is fresh monomer I just pulled out. But I've been working with it for a while. So it's starting to get a little bit dingy. And when you see me, when I pick up beads, look, it's not as big anymore. Why is that? Because there is contamination here. There is liquid, there's acrylic residue that's making my brush the monomer not work too well that I'm not picking up those big round beads I'm used to and it's sticky okay now watch as I throw this monomer out look at the color of this monomer okay and this is from pigment from acrylic being put in there um, watch the difference when I refresh my monomer see how cl much cleaner it looks Yes, I will have the monomer for the Orlando class, for sure. Okay. Look at my B pickup now, guys. With fresh monomer. You see the difference? How much rounder it is? That's literally from me changing out my monomer. Sometimes when you're working and your monomer is getting contaminated, just change it out. Stop trying to get through it. It's just gonna make your work, it's just gonna make it so much more work for yourself. Look at my bead pickup now. I know, oh, it's just a little bit left. I got, you know, I got a one hand left. It's, you, know, you know, it's like, you don't wanna waste it, but sometimes when the monomer has been contaminated, that's because when we're working, we're not cleaning our brush in between before we're going into the monomer. So we're depositing pigment and acrylic residue into the monomer. An old monomer also, is that if you have monomers that have been sitting for like the day before, it's gonna be old. It's gonna be sitting there in a temperate room. It's not gonna be as good as it was when, yesterday when you use it. So I recommend always pouring out enough what you need. I'd rather have not enough and add more than have too much and have waste, okay? So pour out what you need only. And my new monomer dampening dishes are coming soon. They're gonna be just, they're made out of glass so we won't have that issue like these ones anymore. Pretty nice, aesthetically pleasing. You see the, the bead pickup so different. Remember, I'm only worried about getting the cuticles flush for the speed. 
I worry about Apex soon after. Not the biggest of my concerns right now. My concern is getting the cuticle area flushed. So when I when I do go into the cuticle area with the drill bit later, it's gonna be a lot easier work for me. Then I'll be able to build my Apex seamlessly. Where I need it, how much I need it for, it's right here. The Apex is basically where the base of the nail is. And it blends from the cuticle out. And I'm not gonna transfer this powder all the way through the base of my nails, why? I already did the, the, the bead out there. I wanna blend it out so that it doesn't look like it's, 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 it's falling onto it, okay? Let's blend it out, just like that. You know, the powder is dry enough for me to be able to use my whole brush move through the whole thing and there you go see and it took me three three steps Okay, so now I'm gonna speed up a little bit more. So you guys already seen me work, so I'm gonna finish up these just really quickly here. And with some ginormous beads. No, I'm not flexing, but yes, now that I can do one bead. That was with a 10 brush, guys. <laughs> this is a beginner brush. On an XL nail taper tip. So I'm just gonna add my apex. Hey, late. Last your hand tensing up on me. Can't work. If you have too much powder at the tip, just bring it up. Bring it up to the apex. And blend it back down. But as you guys can see, like, if you do a one bead process, it actually it's efficient, but it's not really that much efficient. I want to do that to show you guys that two beading or three beading, it doesn't matter how long it takes you to do it, how many beads it takes you to do it. As long as it works, it works, okay guys? Like, don't have to rush. I might've saved myself maybe 20 seconds, but, you know, I have to work a lot harder. Let's see if I can do an apex beat, uh, one beat with apex. Probably not, be too small. Just enough. Usually this is how I see people do the C-curve tips. That this thickness, it looks great, right? But without the apex, it just means nothing. 
is missing out. It's an essential piece of the puzzle. It's too thin, too flat. It just, I'll just snap and it's gonna hurt the client real bad when it does. So as nail techs, we need to be able to, if we're gonna, do, if we're gonna be doing long nails, we need to do a proper. That's just me, um, my personal opinion. And some may agree, some may disagree. But, you know, I feel like if we're gonna do long nails, I know everybody wants to do long nails, we have to do a proper. We have to take care of the, the nails, make sure the clients have proper structure that they don't, the nails don't break, they don't hurt themselves. Yada, yada, yada. I think that's just some sense of responsibility. It's nail text, right? I'm not just gonna throw nails on and say, oh, okay, give me my money and take the picture. As long as the picture looks good, no. The clients have to wear this, okay? It may have taken you a few hours to do the nails. The client has to wear it for a few weeks, month even, okay? Let's make sure we do it properly and right. Nothing will beat structure, proper structure and nails at the end of the day. I don't care how pretty your design is. If that nail is gonna be lifting, giving them a greenie, or it's gonna be breaking or snapping off or whatever like that, and it's, it ain't worth nothing. You build your house on top of a strong foundation. You don't want to build a beautiful house on a weak foundation and have the house collapse on you, right? Before you start buying all that furniture, decorating, make sure that foundation is strong. Make sure them walls are strong. I miss my metaphors. <laughs> I used to use so many metaphors when I when I when I try, when I educate about nails. I feel like using metaphors that are like you know more common day. People understand it a little bit better. Don't get me wrong. I make good money off designs. Okay. I'm just trying to tell you. It's not always about that. <laughs> I have clients pay good money for like just basic sets and they, they, they're willing to pay it. If they know that the structure's there, they know that the shape is there, they know everything is there. They know that they can go a month without worrying about the nails snapping. They know that if they have a mistake, the nails will break properly. There you guys go. And we are gonna clean our brush, very nice. I'm pulling away my brush as I'm brushing it forward just to get rid of the residue, okay? And when you feather through your brush, if you don't feel any stickiness, it means the brush is free of all stickiness, just minor residue, which is fine. And that was my 10 brush. Brushes will be back in stock by next month. Or by the end of this month, depending on how fast it gets here. Once again, that was chosen 121. So now it's the fun part, right? Going into shaping. Thanks, I've been using a 16. Ooh, a size 16, 20? Oh, a size 16 for 20 years. Wow, me, me, Thomas. I love my 16, to be honest with you. If I had my 16, I'd be actually going through here the faster, but um, right now, we're gonna go through the shaping. And remember, these are the tapered C-curve tips. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up underneath first, and I'm gonna do a transition, like a hand filing. Just a pre-hand filing. Make sure you're using a, like, a little bit worn out um, filer for this. I'm gonna do a hand file. The reason why I'm hand filing is because it's, it's curved. So it's really good for me to be able to go through like this and circular motion. Later on, all I do is do the cuticle work, okay? I'm not, I'm not worried about the cuticle work. 
I have a key to work for that. Well, this set specifically, I'm gonna hand file. It just gives me so much more surface area to cover. Yes, yeah, see? the thinner the nail like the more even your application is the less you have to the less you have to work okay for the cloudy and i see videos people say it's fresh clean liquid i don't know i barely started doing nails i don't know when you encapsulate why would the reason for bubble oh bubble and cloudy it'll be because your your monomer um is uh contaminated like how earlier i showed you guys the monomer contamination that works with clear also whenever i use encapsulation anytime i use clear i always have a separate fresh monomer to use on the side I don't use the same monomer I've been using. Cause that's caught and clear always has bubbling. You're always gonna run into bubbling with clear. You cannot you cannot avoid bubbling, okay? It's just you have to work with smaller beads and pop the bubbles and make sure that you reform the acrylic before it's, it, it dries up. Generally acry uh, clear acrylic are, they take longer to to dry, so you have a lot of time to work with. Work in small increments, they definitely have a, a separate um, monomer, a fresh one. Because a clear, it'll, if your if your uh, monomer is contaminated, it's gonna tint tint the clear and make it look cloudy. If you're using a nude with like a lot of pigment or something like that, that happens a cloudy look. I know a lot of guys never see me do, uh, rarely see me do hand filing, but I'm gonna hand file. Look at that. You guys see that? It's because my application is very smooth, so I really don't have that a lot of acrylic to take off. But this gives me the ability to use this whole board, emery board, and file over it. My clear looks cloudy, yes. Your clear looks cloudy is because the, your monomer is um, contaminated, okay? All you gotta do is make sure your monomer is not old um doesn't have any pigment contamination it's a very common mistake you don't even realize you're doing it because you're thinking oh this monomer is just going to turn this clear into a clear powder no that clear powder is going to take on what that monomer the pigment that has that the dirty monomer has it's just Um, I am doing a, this is a hundred hundred, but it's kind of a little bit worn out. So I want to say it's like a hundred, hundred eighty. It's a hundred, hundred grit that I'm using right now to do the hand filing. This acrylic is 121 by chisel. Hey, what's up, Vina? Oh, thank you for sending stars, Vina. <laughs> so guys, Chicago class is full, but Connecticut and ATL will be announced at the end of this month. If you're in the Connecticut area and you want to take a class with me, Vina, and Cheryl Wong, uh, um, someone we're collaborating with in Connecticut, um, you're more than welcome to DM us, me and Vina, and we can have we can I haven't set up the flyer yet, but I can do the pre uh, pre enrollment like I always do before. Because whenever I announce it or I, I drop the flyer, the class fills up within a week. So Chicago was announced last week, and now it's filled. So yeah. It only took a week for that to fill up. That's why we do pre-enrollment for my followers and you know previous students to take continue education. And then when we announce it publicly, it's when everybody has dibs on it. So So if you're in Connecticut area, you're more than welcome to join us. And also Atlanta. This is hand filing. So I still have to go back through and do my cuticle work, okay? Mm -hmm. 
do a quick shaping real quick. Now, if you haven't been to the gym in a while, this is a great way to make up for the gym. Actually, this is pretty efficient. Sometimes you guys do run out, um, your drill dies on you. You need to have this technique to be able to file on top of the nails. Um, unfortunately, you can't get the cuticle area as you well as you can, but my cuticle area is nice and flush, so I can go without it, but I would definitely go to the cuticle areas also. So this is just basic hand filing techniques that I'm using. Um, a lot of people do use different type of techniques. You can go downward also. Um, you know, there's, this is, there's a lot of ways you can do it. This is just a way that I'm very comfortable with, how I've done it. And it just works really well for me because I'm using the whole board here. And I'm going through it. And I'm going to like a side motion, but I'm circular motion. So I'm not eating into it. It keeps it roundness. See that? Circular motion. And any spots you feel like there's more thickness, you can also spend more time with that, but look at that. Oh, sexy. What happened to your brush, Julianne Marie? You guys said something wrong with your brush? Acrylic being stuck in your brush? I think I have a video for that. I posted a video on how to deep clean your brushes. About done with one hand here. Can you see it? Oof, the shape though. What? The C curve? This, this is where the money is, guys. The money's right here, bruh. Like, this is it. Clients will pay damn good money for this. Proper shaping, structure, you know? And she'll pay a little bit more money for the design. <laughs> this design's gonna be cute. I find myself almost never using my e-file. I'm doing it myself. I feel like I can show the shit better than when I'm using it. Oh, yeah. What are these nails? I'm testing out these tip, these um C curve tips right now. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have them available soon. This is my final test. I thought I'd do a set with them and see how I like them and I think these ones I like. Um, they're not too curved and they're not too too thin, too thick. And the only reason I didn't like what well, some C-curve tips that I've used is that it's too thick. I'm trying to find a thinner alternative. So just hand filing techniques here. Make sure you use a more, uh, when you're doing hand filing, I, I'd recommend using a, a more, little bit worn out a hand filer, okay guys? Don't grab a fresh 80 by 80 or something like that and just start going ham. 
you're gonna cut off the client. You need something more worn out, um, something you've used or sanitized before or something like that. It just, it gives you that nice grittiness to go through and just almost like a new file with your hands. Duh, it's for hand filing. So I will be doing designs on these nails also, so stay tuned. And for you guys that haven't entered into the press on giveaway, it's gonna be announced this weekend. You got a few days. My Instagram is linked right below. Please give me a follow. Appreciate it. The C curve usually extra. Uh, I would say so. I would charge extra for C-curve to be honest with you because it's, it's hard to work with properly. If you did a proper C-curve set, it is harder to work with than working with, an, uh, with a set that's not, okay? I'm, I'm be honest and truth with you guys. Using C-curve tips is actually harder because you have to build more structure and you have to be more attentive to the shape, the thickness. So yes, I think C-curve should be extra money. I think, I, I think so, I, yeah, I think it is. It costs you more to get different type of tips. Anything that costs you more money or more time to do should reflect in your work. That's why I say um, your work's not based on the designs. How do you enter? All you gotta do is go to the post on my Instagram and tag through your friends, follow and share that post and you're good. And once you're, you've commented in the thing, it, it, there's a system that automatically picks a winner out of the comment section. You just gotta follow my Instagram and then check for that post. It should have been posted a few days ago. Oh, I know I'm gonna make a bomb ass press on set. Whoever wins it, gonna be lucky. go through and do the cuticle work after I'm done and I'm gonna file buff and we're gonna pretty much do some nice abstract art designs with some pretty colors those of you guys are hanging in there happy Wednesday happy hump day now I don't recommend do hand filing if your application is really thick because the thicker your application is, the more you gotta hand file. For me, I'm not really hand filing that much because my application is similarly very nice and smooth. So just a few you know, nicks and corners here and there, but. I do like the aesthetics of the C-curve tips that's in the side, the side profile. It's very satisfying, right? I get it. I get why people use it. I do know. I do. I do feel like it is more work. You cannot deny the fact that having C-curve tips is more work. But it means more money. I think maybe five to ten dollars more for C-curve tips. It's a Five dollars more, eh, ten dollars to make it worth it. To be honest with you, at least five dollars.
Okay. Last thumb and cuticle work. Just cuticle work is very quick. I'm like breaking a sweat. Hand filing. But I thought I'd show it to you guys. No, you're not gonna hurt the client. As long as you hold the nails structurally. Okay guys, so we're gonna go right into cuticle work here. I'm gonna use a small drill bit, very sharp one, okay? I'm gonna have to worry about, I don't have to worry about the base of the nail because we already took care of that with the hand filer. And right now my main concern is flushing this cuticle area and making sure that it's nice and flush. So that I don't have any lifts, okay? around these corners right here. I'll blend it in a little bit. The rest of this is just buff. This is a very sharp bit. We have to go in the cuticles, just in and out. Just like that. Just like that. You see? How simple, quick that is. As long as you flush the cuticle area, it should be good. Now we don't have to worry about the base of the nail because we just were, there's a hand filing there. So it's just our flushing the cuticles. Very simple. Did everything in steps. So we're good to go. This is where the lips are, okay? We can stop the lips by doing this. Proper prep, good cuticle work. You should never, ever run into any issues with lifting. Okay, minimal lifting at one month, two or three weeks and above. And you should not have big lifts, okay? See how I'm positioning her hands? I put her finger where I need her to be. 
I'm never gonna re I'm never gonna reposition myself in a situation where I'm gonna be um, uncomfortable working, especially when I'm doing a sharp drill bit. Okay, make sure your client understands that. You know, we're not here to work by their rules. Like, yes, we do their nails, but you need to tell them, hey, fix your body. Hey, fix this so that I can work better. You know, that's a very it's common courtesy. Okay. Can you relax your hands? I don't cut you. I think that's the, a very good, a strong statement. They should tell whenever a client's fighting you or they're not relaxed, say, hey, can you relax your hands so I don't cut you? And you know, they're pretty much telling them what can happen if they don't relax their hands. So if you do cut them, then we know why, right? They didn't relax their hands. Period. Haley, we're at the thumb. I don't want to bone quick with you, okay? She even knew. She just knew she tensed up there. Clients, they know, y'all. They know when they're they're being tense. Don't let them tell you. Oh, I didn't know I was so tense. I'm like, you really? You didn't realize that death grip you were giving me? <laughs> buffing block I'm gonna buff actually before we do that I'm gonna clean up underneath pretty good job there's not that much stuff underneath except that one finger I'm not gonna go through with a, uh, with a, with a cuticle bit Good buff. I'm talking about good buff. Remember when we did the hand filing, so it's very pretty. So now with our buffer, we gotta go real through and get a good buff. And boom, look at that baby. Hold the client's nails like this. Stretch on the bottom for your buff. You don't wanna be buffing like this and just hurting them, okay? And we're buffing out all those hand filing ridges that we had earlier. You don't buff that out when you polish, you might have issues, okay? Because we didn't use the drill to do the base, we have to do all these extra steps. And hello, wow, look at this. We did this, guys, we did this. Look at that, just look at it. You see that meme where the guy's like, mm, just look at it. Look at it, did you look at that?
That's a wonder if what you'll use. Oh, my drill is like 300 bucks, but it lasts me forever. I've never actually had to replace a drill. I just like give it to my staff and then buy a new one. Like they've never broken. Like the medical has been so good to me. And I work a lot, guys. <laughs> but you have to really take care of it too. I mean, if you're starting out, you don't need a really, you don't really need a three hundred dollar drill. Just get one of those cheap ones and just practice first. And then there'll be your backup drill, and then you know, later on when you're ready to invest in a, a stronger drill, you have a backup drill. Nothing wrong with that. So she's gonna wash her hand, and we're gonna get ready to do the um, design. A little bit of abstract lines on here, pretty pretty, using like a lot of um, browns and. Stuff like that. You guys will love it. But let's just take a few minutes to um, appreciate the structure. That's nail that we'll call it. The structure and its profile of the nails. Okay, we put work into this, guys. Okay. This is, as a nail tech, what you need to strive for. Ability to build structure, side profile. There you go, wash your hands. If anything, that's what you need to work with every day. Every full set we do, it's the same process, right guys? There's no reason why you can't be amazing nail techs based on just the structure alone. Do you have to cap? No, you don't have to cap chisel acrylic. The only acrylic you guys, you guys are, uh, you guys know when you have to cap an acrylic, when it's just pigmented, very pigmented, right? So Valentino, some uh, Mia Secret, some, uh, uh, what else? Uh, what's that? What's the other brand? Glamming Blitz. They're very common ones that you have to cap. Not with these the other brands right now. They're mixed properly, so you don't have to cap. Not mixed properly, they're just mixed in a way where you don't, you don't have to cap. Okay, I'm not gonna hate on anybody. I'm just gonna I'm telling you the truth, okay? I personally don't like to cap acrylic. It just it makes no sense to me as a nail tech to have to go back through and redo my application process to cap something again. That's my personal opinion. Um, other people may think differently, uh, and there are amazing techs that do it the other way, and they do amazing work also. So yes, it's a preference of how you want to do it and how you train yourself to do it. So for me, I just don't do it, so I, it's not it's uncomfortable for me. But for others, it may be you know a wholly different, a whole different experience. So to each their own. Okay, so now I'm gonna put some extra. Can you get the picture out? Can you get the picture out for me? Yeah. So I'm using these three colors um, from Wave Gel. I would gel matte. Man, I forgot to take a side profile pic.
I'm this petty, guys. I will take this off so I can get a nice, clean side profile pic and redo it. Not petty, but I'm the, I'm that, you know. I always, I always take a side profile pic of every nail I do. I keep it in like a portfolio. Why? So I can see my growth. That's why. Very. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> Okay, we're good. Now we can go back to design. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just saw that happen. So what? I've made clients come back, travel like 30 minutes, come back to take a picture of their nails. I forgot, and it was really pretty. I wouldn't say I made. I just suggested to them, hey, I would like to take a picture of your nails. I forgot. And you know, they come back, they come back. Our brushes will probably be back in stock next month. Yeah, I just, you know what it is? My students are the ones that are buying it up. I didn't compensate for that. Every, every one of my classes, all my students will be buying the brushes. <laughs> I remember one, I think it was New York where the students were fighting over. <gasps> ah, the students were fighting over the brushes. I felt so bad. Bad now, Dad. That's when you come to class early. <laughs> no, keep it. Put it. Put it. Make sure you paint really thin, you don't want to make too thick, okay? You lose your shape.
Ah! Stop that! Hey, I swear to God. Sorry. You can't get left on red in the DMs or something? Yes. Oh, I thought you need something. Is AC in? Man, the other side is... is, is the, it might be the, uh, the outlet in the back, the switch. You probably turn the switch off. I should. I bought a whole box. <laughs> you guys drinking it? I have to order more. See them? Because the AC is not on, I told you it is. <laughs> it's like a freaking oven in here because I told you the AC is not on. Huh? Is it? No, it's, it's something with the switch. Hmm? Oh, are you? I just grabbed it. I don't want to lose my shape, so I'm gonna. One of this polish is from not from Wave Gel, but it's, it's still pretty, but just makes me lose my shape, so I have to fix the shape real quick.
ใช่เลยใช่ like you like a yell my own daughter you have the same name Was she? What's she gonna done? No, I don't get that stuff. Only you guys get that stuff. I don't qualify for that. I actually pay taxes to make sure you guys get it. You're welcome. <laughs> Me, fourteen hundred? I don't think so. The government isn't that nice to business owners. <laughs> But they'll take out of my taxes. Make sure you get yours, though. Hmm? I'm leaving on the 25th for Boston. Yeah, to Philly. I'll be back before I go to my other trip. Where? Philly. Philly? What's Philadelphia? Yeah. Like where the Fresh Prince Bel Air was that? Uh, no. I said what's Philadelphia? You're like, yeah.
<laughs> One day. Child, teach me class. I'm gone for like 11 days. I'm going straight from uh, Philly, Boston to Philly. So what does the new tech can do? She do everything? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Where was she thinking about going to work? Hmm? Where was she gonna go? Um, she, she was about to go to CT now. But... CT? Yeah, I don't know. Where is that? Mm hmm Shut her up. Hmm? It does. I mean, like, it's money on Sundays. I don't know why you're like, yes, I don't want to work. See that? Let me see the pinky. Take it out. I told her, like, you know, it's like, hey, it's money, so y'all should be working. Especially for those of you guys that are need money. It's always packed on Sundays. Now that you, now that you need money, like you, you, you need to work, you need money. This is the time to work. You, Kayla, and whatever, you guys are gonna be booked already by the time spring hits, or well, spring hits, summer hits, I need more texts. Can't even handle the amount of traffic coming in. Especially when I'm gone, you guys are gonna probably go crazy. I can't imagine what it's like when I'm, I'm not here. Oh, my endocrine it's, it's good. You sure? Yeah. It's okay. just, there's cap that, that they book in book seat. That's why you gotta pay attention to the books when you come in, in the morning and check appointments. If there's something double stack, you gotta call them. Mm -hmm. I know. We thought, me and Jenny thought each other was our first job. Huh? It was so busy. Wendy was like, oh my god, they may not have anything. Yeah. Don't take in clients if you can't take them in though. Just let them go. Not worth it. I don't want any bad complaints because they have to wait. I built the salon up from the ground up. I don't want any bad reputation. We can refuse clients. Just say, hey, you know, come back another day or something like that. Don't try to take them in. Especially with how Jenny and them are, they're slower, so. What's the good thing about the new one? It's just fast. I like fast. Well, fast, but great. Okay. Not like fast. I need about three more texts for me to leave comfortably. Or I have to worry about the salon exploding when I'm here, not here. Our salon's the only salon in the area that does the Instagram stuff now, so we're we not have any problem with that.
Point. So we're just gonna top coat this real quick. It's matte. This designs, I love the matte look, but some people like shiny, so we're gonna get shiny. Like every time I have the same conversation with you, okay? Like every time. Yeah. You keep bringing me these matte designs that want shiny. So why don't you leave the other sh your old shop? Because the boss should um, do get one job to have the person that that she don't like, and then that person like 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 cut her. Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's a dirty move. All right. <sighs> There you guys go. Cute, huh? That's pretty cute. It's up and it's up. Dang, structure. Got a little charm legend in me. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. guys thank you for joining me and my next client is waiting for me get some cuticle oil for her
show you guys the finished product here. Just need to get the cuticle on the cuticle and then wipe it off, okay? We don't need to have it sitting in there. Once it hydrates the cuticle, let's get it, remove it. This actually looks pretty good shiny also, but matted also will have a very good look to it. <sighs> Hope you guys like that set. When you see curb tips, a little bit of abstract. Side profile. 